Hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel, my dear friends. Today, we will talk about one of my most favorite short stories in English written by a Filipino. Actually, a Filipina. And that is Desire by Paz La Torena. Now, let me just give you a brief background about our author, Paz La Torena. She was born in the year 1908 and if my memory serves me right, she studied in UP. She took up BSE major in English. But in her senior year, she transferred to UST. And after graduating from UST, she was hired by the same university to teach English and other literature courses. Ayan. Now, one very sad morning of October in the year 1953, she collapsed um, while she was administering the final examinations of her students. And on the same very, very sad day, she also passed away. And uh, yeah, that is a short background about our author. And how about her other works? Well, I also love um, Sunset. And of course, the small key. But in this video, my dear friends, we will only talk about desire. And what are my references for today? Well, number one, I will be using the book Philippine Contemporary Literature in English um, by Ofelia Di Malanta and Virginia Mata. And of course, Desire and, and Other Stories by Pasa Torena, edited by Professor Eva Kalau. So if you're ready, let's begin. Now, my dear friends, there are two major characters in the short story. The first one is The Unnamed Woman. And number two, the American who would appear at the latter part of the short story. Now, how about the plot? Well, Paz La Torena started the short story by describing the main character, the unnamed woman. And the first two paragraphs are vivid descriptions of the character. Now, the first one would describe the face and the second one would be describing the body. And the difference between these two descriptions are, are could never be more distinct <laughs> because my dear friends in the first paragraph she started it with saying that she has a homely face or the character has a homely face and as we all know homely is a euphemism for the word ugly right and as you read along the first paragraph you would have in your mind a vision of a woman whose face or whose countenance um, would fall short of the beauty standards of their time and most probably of our time as well. Ayan. But uh, on the other hand, my dear friends, the second paragraph, um, the description of the body, uh, inside your mind, you would be imagining a, a person who has this beautiful, beautiful body. Ayan. So in short, my dear friends, um, the character has a homely face and yet a beautiful body. And the, the strange thing in this story is that if, if I were to be the main character and if I were, if I were to choose which one, is, which one I prefer, the beautiful body or the homely face, I would, I would prefer, I would focus more on my beautiful body. But in here, the character would think that the beautiful body that she possesses is actually a curse. Like, say what? <laughs> yeah. Um, para do sa character, yung kanyang katawa na maganda ang sumpa. Not her homely face, but the body. Right? And for us, this may be a difficult pill to swallow. But as you read along, you would realize her reasons behind that. Ang sabi niya, she hated her body or she thinks that her body is the curse because her body would make men look at her um, and let me quote, in in a very unbeautiful light. Uh, I think when she said unbeautiful light, I think it means with malice or with with unclean thoughts. So ayan. So ang sabi niya, parang ayokong, ayokong ng katawad ko kasi um, my body would make men look at me in a different way. Parang ganyan. So <laughs> that is fresh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Especially nowadays, na parang iba na ang perspective ng mga tao. Like, parang iba na. Mamaya, as we analyze the short story, we will talk about those things. Pero, yun yung concepto. And that is why, my dear friends, she decided to cover her body by, by of course, wearing loose clothing to create an impression that she lost that beautiful body and all she has right now is a is, is like a shapeless um, sh shapeless flesh. 
Ayan, yung parang yun yung description niya. So that men would not look at her anymore in an unclean way. So she avoided being being objectified by by men by hiding her body. And she kept she kept herself busy um, by writing uh meron siyang naging kapenpal from America and they were able to have uh, good correspondences with each other. And so the American decided to visit the Philippines and because he wanted to meet our main character. And most probably, unlike nowadays, na meron ng pictures ang mga profiles ng FB or Instagram or whatever, noon wala pa eh. So um, the American would not know how our main character would look like. And when he finally saw our main character, when he when he arrived in the Philippines, he was kind of flab- uh, flabbergasted because sabi niya, oh my goodness, uh, you look different, parang ganyan. <laughs> but still, the American decided to spend time with her. And he realized that this woman is very special because she she, she speaks well and her ideas are also great. So they dated and they dated and they dated. And so the main character thought that This this could probably it. Her dream is finally coming true. A man is actually interested not on her body but on what she has to say, on her personality. So akala niya ito na yon. So one day she decided that it is high time for her to reveal her body. So she decided to lose the loose clothing and then she was able to put on a very revealing dress. As, as the way I imagined it. And then the American saw it. The American saw her and the American said, oh my goodness, you have a very beautiful body. And then she responded by saying that, oh, I didn't know that, but she was lying because she knows perfectly well. And from that time on, the American could not stop looking at her body. And Yun mentioned the bother na siya dun, Na parang sabi niya, yung iniiwas ako mangyari, parang nagkakatotoo. <laughs> Diba? Na parang ayoko ba in love siya sa akin dahil sa katawan ko. I want him to love me uh, because of my personality. Yun. Kasi parang nabasa ko sa short story, ang dream lang niya is yung isang lalaki na titingin sa kanya at sabihin sa kanya na, I love you. Mahal kita. Tama? Pero ngayon, parang kinakabahan na siya. And then suddenly, my dear friends, in one of their dates together, the man, was the American, was able to blurt out something very offensive For, of course, the main character. The American said that, I love your... Sabi niya, what? what? What do you love about me? I love your... Like, what? Say it! And then the American blurted out, I love your body. And, uh, you know, medyo nalungkot siya. And the disappoint then, kasi nga, parang, ayun na nga, na yung katawan niya naman niya naging focus ng lahat. So, when when the day was over, Um, the American apologized because he felt that he offended the main character. And then, uh, think ko, doon na blurt out ni nung main character yung pinaka-favorite na line ko dito. Yung pinaka-favorite line ko sa short story. Uh, I'm gonna read it, ah. Sabi ng American, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna read it from the text itself. I am sorry was all he said. There was a world of regret in, in the eyes. She turned on him. For what? She asked in a tired voice. And then she again continued, You have just been yourself like other men. He winced, and with a weary smile, she passed within. So, ayun. <laughs> Such a nice way to end a story. Right? So, ano nga bang ibig sabihin nito? And what are the points that we must discuss in this short story? Ayan, next na yan. So, wag kayong aalis. Well, for me, I love the short story because I feel that it is a very fertile ground um, kung saan marami kang issues na pwedeng matakel, marami kang mga points na pwedeng maituro sa inyong mga sudyante. Like, for example, um, ang pinaka-obvious is yung Uh, pananaw na mga Filipino sa kagandahan. And I think we have to admit it. Aminin natin, my dear friends, that in the Philippines, our standards of beauty are so high. <laughs> Napakataas talaga ng ating standards pagdating sa kagandahan. Kaya naman talagang if the persona in this short story would feel bad about how she looks, it is very much understandable. 
And the strange thing is, this book was written in the year 1928. And tagal tagal na. But at the same time, the points being raised are still very relevant up until today. Diba? Number two, um, because of this short story, we would have an idea on how Filipinos of the past were able to live. And I would say, napa conservative talaga nila. Um, one example of that is when the American was telling the main character that she's very different. Not because of her appearance, but because of her attitudes towards dating. Ito yung sabi niya, babasahin ko ah. Sabi dito ng Americano, para asa na ba yun? Sabi, uh, No Filipino girl would come out and chaperoned with a man, a white man at that. So parang during that time, para talagang pamahigipagdika ka, dapat may kasama kang iba. <laughs> diba? Parang ngayon, that, that is unheard of. <laughs> I don't know. Pero what is more amazing than that is how the unnamed main character responded. Napakawiti nitong babae na ito eh. Ito, 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 ito yung sagot niya. Sabi niya, A homely woman can very well afford to break conventions. Nobody minds her if she does. That is one consolation of being homely, was her calm reply. <laughs> like, if you would think about it, medyo masakit yun na. Parang sin- sinasabi niya na pag pangit ka, nobody cares kung nag-break ka ng conventions. <laughs> sakit, di ba? Parang, What? <laughs> So guys, point number three na pwedeng pag-usapan is yung issue ng objectification of the female body which I think is very controversial mula pa noon at hanggang sa ngayon. Um, lalong-lalo na na yung action na ginawa ng main character may seem so unorthodox compared to the perspective of today. Na parang kasi ngayon, pag if you have it, flaunt it, di ba? Kung magandang katawan mo, ipakita mo, huwag ka mahihiya. Don't care about what, what other people would say. Pero kay Paz na Torena, or through her character sa short story in Desire, iba yung values na ipinakita. Like, ang um, yung main character, ang sabi niya, uh, instead of uh, flaunting it, tinago niya. So, ayun. So, magkaiba yung, magkaiba yung steps na ginawa nung main character sa short story at ng iba sa atin ngayon. At ang tanong, ano bang tamang dapat gawin? Well, I think, uh, kayong bahala. <laughs> and in the, in the postmodern world naman, you have the power to decide kung anong gusto mong gawin. Pero, naiintindihan ko yung pinanggagalingan nung main character ni Pasta Torena. And if there's one thing that I like about her, na tingin ko dapat lahat tayo meron, ay self-awareness. <laughs> Eto na. Now, Mr. Padilla, what do you mean by self-awareness or pertaining to the character? Well, mga kaibigan kasi yung character natin sa short story, marami siyang al- alam niya, alam niya yung mga facts of life. Number one, alam na alam niya that there is evil in this world. And I think, kailangan tayong gumising sa katotohanan na yun eh. na sa ating daigdig, in our world today, talagang merong mga masasamang tao. Tal- tal- talagang gagawan ka ng mga masasamang bagay. Talagang babasusin ka, ibabash ka, would say bad things about you. That is a fact of life. Hindi po lahat ng tao mabait. <laughs> Number two, alam na alam din po ng ating main character that not all men are good. Again, hindi po lahat ng lalaki mabait. <laughs> talagang meron dyan na that would, that would really objectify you. Na talagang misan babasusin ka. Talagang, talagang misan would look at you in an unbeautiful light. Talagang meron ganun. Hindi mo yan may iiwasan. At kahit ano pang gawin natin, parang talagang hindi yan mawawala sa kanila. That is bad. Masamang ugali yun. Dapat yung tanggalin. Pero talagang ganun eh. That is a fact of life. Hindi lahat mabait at hindi lahat, at hindi lahat magiging mabait. ba? Diba? So, alam yun nung main character ni Paz na Torena. And since she is aware of those facts of life, then naisip niya that since she cannot control the evil thoughts of those evil men, mga kaibigan, at ang kaya lang kontrolin is yung kanyang sarili, then she took it upon herself to do something. Sabi nga nila, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Ibig sabihin, something's gotta give. So, my dear friends, yun ang choice niya. Um, since ayaw niya ma-objectify siya ng mga sa paligid niya, she chose to cover herself up with thick and loose clothing. 
So kung para sa kanya, yun ang paraan para hindi siya ma-objectify, then by all means, we have to respect that. And if you have other thoughts about it, kung tingin nyo, mali yung ginawa niya, kung tingin nyo dapat i-flaunt niya yung kanyang katawan because yun ang maganda sa kanya, then by all means, you are entitled to that opinion. <laughs> Pero I guess, my dear friends, maganda na malaman natin yung pinanggagalingan ng character. Kaya naman, I'll be reading some lines from the short story. Ito. Sabi dito, She wanted love, was starved for it, but she did not want the love that her body inspired in men. She wanted something purer, cleaner. She was disgusted and hurt, for men told other women that they loved them, looking deep into their eyes to the souls beneath, their voices low and soft, their hands quivering with the weight of their tenderness. But men told her that they loved her body with eyes that made her feel as if she were naked. stripped bare for their sinful eyes to gaze upon. They told her that with voices made thick by desire, touched her with hands of fire, that seared her flesh, filling her with scorn and loathing. Hmm. Yeah. Now, my dear friends, to further understand the mindset of the main character, I'll be reading one paragraph. Natingin ko isa to sa mga pinaka-important paragraphs in the short story that uh, most of us would overlook. So, basahin ko ah. To. Sabi dito, and I read, She wanted to be loved as other women were loved. She was as good and as pure as they. And some of them were as homely as she was. But they did not have beautiful bodies. And so, they were loved for themselves. <laughs> so in here mga kaibigan Parang compare nung main character Ang sarili niya sa iba, sa iba mga babae Sabi niya But iba naman Hindi naman din ganun kaganda Pero may nagmamahal ng totoo Minamahal sila bilang sila And comparing sa sarili niya Sasabihin niya na pa, Kung para sa akin Na parang since Hindi ako ganun kaganda Pero maganda katawan ko merong, Meron siyang pag-iisip na Baka minamahal siya Hindi dahil sa totoong siya Kung hindi, kung hindi dahil sa kanyang magandang katawan. Right? So, yun yung kanyang, kanyang worry. And I think, my dear friends, one more um, realization dito sa paragraph na ito is that uh, the main character does not really think that all men are only after the physical attributes of a woman. So, naniniwala din siya na hindi lahat na lalaki after sa kagandahan o sa kaseksihan. Kasi nga, di ba, dito raw, may ibang babae na hindi naman maganda hindi din sexy, pero minamahal lang totoo. Right? Being loved for who they are actually inside. O, di ba? So, one paragraph, pero ang dami natin realize. So, the question is, why should we read Desire by Pasta Torena? Well, I think, to be reminded. <laughs> to be reminded of certain things that we know, but we may have forgotten. At ano yun? Na mas mahalaga pa rin ang kalooban kaysa sa physical na kaanyuan. And I think, mga kaibigan, sa panahon ngayon na sa social media, sa Instagram, sa Facebook, sa TikTok, sa Twitter, na kung saan lahat yan, you need to, you, you need to um, show your best self, at least physically, para nakakalimutan natin na mas mahalaga yung nasa loob natin, ang ating isip, ang ating puso. And nakakabilib lang yung character ni Pasta Torena that uh, yun ang kanyang pananaw, na she stood by it. Kasi kung ibang tao lang yan, mga kaibigan, parang matutuwa na at least meron pa rin siyang katawan na magugustuhan ng ibang tao. Pero ang sabi nung character, no, hindi naman talaga yun ang mahalaga. Ang gusto ko, they, they will love me for who I am inside. The person na talagang ako. O, oh, ayan. So, mga kaibigan, sa mga lit teachers dyan, I think uh, this is one short story that you must ask your students to read. Kasi, number one, in terms of the words used by Paz, ito hindi naman mahirap maintindihan. Actually, napakadali niya maintindihan. And not only that, ang galing ng kanyang pagkakasulat. I would have to say that Paz Torena is one of the best writers in the Philippines. So, mga haibigan, I hope you enjoyed our video for today. And I hope, mga haibigan, na-inspire kayong basahin ang desire at ipabasa sa mga kakilala nyo. Mga haibigan, it is worth your time. In the meantime, maraming maraming salamat and see you again soon. Bye, everybody!